gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime! You got a horror Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post here, joined as I am each and every week by Aaron Everham. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Fantastic. But I come off a sprint car weekend. No. Oh. Now you come off a birthday weekend. I know. Yeah. I'm like so, so you know, 29 again. 29 again. Absolutely. Yeah, well, ish. happy 29th ish. Yes, 29. <laughs> happy 29th ish. Yes. Yes, exactly. We'll go with that. Exactly. So uh, you had a good weekend, everything. Well, you did a horse I did. show. Yeah, it was at a horse yeah. show, but it, yeah, Kate's new barn is some good families. We we might have had a little tequila involved. It was a oh, good time. Oh, man, that so, sounds yeah. good. But I didn't get to go to Pennsylvania to see sprint car racing. No, I'm telling you. Um, I've been on this kick this year, and you, you've heard it every time we've cracked open the microphones here for Wing Nation about screaming at people about going to races. And, uh, and and I shared a little bit of this after Lincoln when I got there. And then between Lincoln and this past weekend, I watched some pay-per-view shows. And, and pay-per-view is awesome. Pay-per-view does a great job. But it is nothing like being at the racetrack. And so, uh, yeah, um, Central Pennsylvania. Uh, a couple of things that stand out. Um, Aaron, we spent a lot of time talking about California young talent. Yep. Don't look now. There is some really good young talent in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think, I think, and we had him on a couple of weeks ago, Troy Wagaman mm-hmm. is probably going to win a fair number of races this year. He's in the Mike Hefter 27 car. Yep. He's so, I think Troy Wagaman is one to watch. But just up there, Chase Dietz, Aaron Bollinger, Matt Campbell, Kyle Moody, Dylan Norris are just a few. Uh, there is a lot of young talent that is... Moving up, graduated from the 358s or yeah. from the 305s, and um, they're 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 trying. To, I think one of the things of Pennsylvania, they're they're finding their way after the era of big owners is gone. I mean, you know, we still have Mike Hefner, we still have a few, yeah. but that that era where you had car after car after car, and and guys would just you know two or three years in this car and two or three years in that car. Yeah. Um, th- that era is gone, but these teams and families are figuring ways to make things work. And um, I think there's a lot of good young talent. So that's one thing I came away from. Uh, another thing I came away from, and I shared this after Lincoln, and it is through the moon, the Danny Dietrich, Freddie Raymer rivalry. <laughs> if they can keep from killing each yeah. other, wrecking each other, or taking out other innocent people, <laughs> this is maybe the best thing in sprint car racing right now. At Lincoln on the opener, at Williams Grove on Friday night, we'll talk about that in a little bit, and at BAPS, when those two cars get around each other, that is all anybody is focused on. And and that's all anyone's talking about. I mean, we had a photo finish, and the the BAPS race was spectacular. Mm. But um, we had a photo finish, but the energy in that place when Danny got by Freddie was wild. It's crazy. And and at one time, Freddie was rolling to the front, and, and the Raymer fans are up, and they're waving. And then Danny's rolling to the front, and they're up and waving. And then they met third. I mean, just, it is so good if they can keep from killing each other, wrecking race yes. cars, and mm-hmm. wrecking innocent people. Yeah. This thing is... Rivalry is good. Rivalry is really good. And this one is good. Um, it, it, this is really good. Uh, another thing that comes away, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, I get to BAPS about every two or three years. I am telling you, it's like when you see kids and you don't see them for six months or a year. What Scott Gobrek and Colton are doing there is phenomenal. Th- that place looks so good. That place races so good, looks so good. I mean, just everything there is good. I mean, Unreal, unreal! <laughs> how good that place is, and and I and I put this up there. I put this up there, and I'll I'll say the same thing that I said about Lincoln. Um, this Babs Motor Speedway. If you put Babs Motor Speedway 
anywhere in yeah. the country, it would be a big welcome. And it's and it's big in a welcome edition there in central Pennsylvania. You put that anywhere in the country, and that would be the premier store chain. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the problem is, is you, you have Lincoln, you have, right you have Port Royal, you, and you have Williams Grove. Yeah. I mean, but the, the bottom line of it is, is what they have done there is unreal, and they're they're building a micro track. We have to go up and see a micro race up there now. <laughs> so that is good. But now, all of this, all of this pales in comparison to the the headline of the weekend. Okay. <laughs> Let me guess. Yes, in food. food. Oh my gosh, Aaron! There is a new food group that I did not even realize existed. Okay, Ron Rutherford. Ron is a team owner. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But he owns Mama's Pizza in Wellsville. I walk in there Sunday to get lunch, and he says, "You want a pizza boy or pretzel boy? You want a pretzel?" I'm like, "What is he talking?" About? <laughs> and I'm so I'm talking to him, and he's great. And I've I've met Ron a couple of times. I mean, first off, you walk in there. I think it's his girlfriend that runs the front of the shop. She's decked out in sprint car stuff. Over in the corner is a table full of sprint car fans, another group of sprint car fans, sprint car pictures Your on people. the wall. This is, this, is, this is our people. This is church. Okay, This is sprint car church. <laughs> so I'm going down through the menu, and I'm like, what is he talking about? This pretzel, whatever. Pretzel, you know. I get to the Stromboli section, pretzel bowling. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you think, there now those of you watching on YouTube. Wow. Yeah, Wow. The picture doesn't even do it justice. What was inside your pretzel I did, bowl? I did pepperoni and cheese. Did we crush the whole thing? Uh, I, no, I did not. No, because I got an order of fries, which an order of fries uh, is approximately the size of a dump truck load of fries. Okay. Um, no, I did not. But I, but I like cold pizza and the next morning for breakfast. Oh. That was so good. Um, pretzel bully. Stromboli, but pretzel. Okay. Ron, he's serious about this. He actually went and contracted with a local pretzel because they they make all kinds of pretzels in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Went to a local pretzel company and has an exclusive contract with them for the pretzel dough. And they make the stromboli in pretzel dough, (laughs) put a little salt on top of it. Aaron, life changing. Really? This is unreal. I mean, we, we, I'll map quest it. We could jump in the car now and drive up there and get some, and it would be worth you the trip. you just say map quest? Yes, map quest. Exactly. No, Google Maps. Okay, map quest is my, yeah. That's, that's, that's the old school when you yeah, printed them out. Yes, you printed them out to find the local racetracks. Exactly, yes. Uh, back in the day before, you used to just find a race car on a hauler and follow that. Before you had your there, speedway yeah. directory. Speedway directory and map, and, yeah, and, 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 and a atlas. Map. Yes, yep. exactly. Um, pretzel boy. Okay, I'm like, it is It is ridiculous. So it's in Wellsville. Uh, if you're nearby there, it's great. Now, Ron, okay, and I, and I, told, I told Mark Smith, and, I, and I, I didn't get to tell Danny this, the fact that they've known about Pretzel Bully for all these years and have never told, about, told me about this, it really, really hacks me off, okay? Because uh. this, is, this is life-changing stuff. Ron, the Pretzel Bully is phenomenal. The restaurant is great, <laughs> really, really good. Food, food is awesome there, okay? Ron in his third year as a sprint car owner. 410, Mark Smith is driving that car, and his son Tyler is running 358s, mm. and Sunday afternoon he got his first podium finish. At oh, Bats. very cool. So a great, great thing. So kudos to Ron Rutherford. Who uh, is the, watching right yes, now, by the Ron way. Is, okay, Ron, good to see you. The pretzel bully <laughs> is life-changing. Uh, Aaron, I'm serious. I can tell. You I'm, you don't mess around with your food. We I know don't that. mess around. Yeah. No, I don't mess around with my food, which makes me mad that all of these people – haven't told me about this sooner, that you should know if there's a food item out there. I mean, this is, <laughs> it's unreal uh, how good it is. So uh, great, great folks. And I love, uh, I love getting out to the racetrack, but I love getting to places like this. This was, like I said, this was Sprint Car Church yeah. with food. I mean, this was unreal. So um, if you find yourself up in central Pennsylvania, Wellsville, it was uh, 12 minutes, 13 minutes over to BAPS. So I can't imagine it's all that far from everywhere else. Mama's Pizza. Use and your map quest to get there. I'll map quest it to get there. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to follow my nose. I'm just going to follow my nose to get there. It's uh, good. Uh, uh, great, Steve's great. still using the AAA, uh, you know, fold Trip-tick. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah the old Thank map, you. and it folds up, and you got to wind it around and everything else. I mean, he's got a flip phone for crying yes. out loud. Well, I do have a flip phone. I do have a this flip phone. This is the fanciest flip That's phone I've ever seen. That's a flip phone right there. Exactly, right there. So... Um, yeah, still okay. has MapQuest on. Right, I, I got MapQuest on here. Okay, hold on <laughs> one second. Mama's Pizza. I'll, I'll tell you how far uh, it is right now. We'll go Mama's Pizza, Wellsville. Okay, Aaron, it is. Okay. Can oh, be there tonight. My signal doesn't work in this building because we're in a bunker. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, I'm telling you, it would be worth a drive. That's how good this is. It would be <laughs> worth a drive. My map quest is slow. Seven hours and 21 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah, dinner four, time. Late dinner. Four, yeah, there 466 miles. It would be worth it to drive up there for a pretzel bowl, turn around, and come back. That's how good these things are. I might just, if you're not going, I might just do it. Ron, throw one in there for me. Well, no, it's great. Um, it was Maybe fun. we can get Uber Eats to deliver it. Oh. Eight hours later. That's all right. That's a little bit of a step up well, from no, MapQuest. Well, no, no, no. But see, the thing of it is, is see, there's something about pizza that very few people understand. Ron understands this. Pizza is good the first time, but great pizza is good the second yeah. time. And this was great the I second time. I feel like time any too. Italian is yeah, better well, the second right go around. That. You're right about that. So good stuff. So Can we talk racing Curtis. now. We're like oh, yeah. way oh, behind yes. on okay. time. Let's go. Okay. Carson Macedo, oh, Freddie Raymer, and Corey Eliasson won the races. There we go. That's <laughs> it. Right there. There we go. We got that covered. So, yeah. Boom. Bang. There we go. Um, <laughs> first off, Car- we're going to talk to Carson and Corey. Okay. Carson Macedo picked up the win with the World of Outlaws at Kennedale. First win of the season. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Oh, Craig just wanted it because he has all this fancy highlight footage yeah. here. Hey, yeah. I put in all the work. He I'm put like, in all the know. work to get the highlight footage, and we're talking about Pretzel Bully right there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, what a finish. We're yeah. going to talk to Carson cool about track. this. Yep. That was a great, great racetrack. Yeah. Little bull ring there in Kennedale, Texas. Great stuff. So, Carson Macedo over David Gravel and Aaron Reitzel in the World of Outlaws. Friday night, I talked about this rivalry. I am telling you. When Freddie and Danny get near each other, Danny was leading the race. They started in the front row together. The luck of the draw put them on the front row together. Danny got the lead early, but you could sense that Freddie was a little quicker. And when Freddie pulled the trigger coming out of two down into three, of course, he did it right in front of Beer Hill, which <laughs> made half of the people on Beer Hill scream and holler, made half other half move. of the people want to puke. Okay. Uh, um, but it was great. So Freddie Raymer picked up the win, 18th career win at Williams Grove. Freddie over Danny Dietrich, Corey Eliasson. Baps Motor Speedway, this was why the whole day was great. And uh, Corey Eliason and um, Corey Eliason and Troy Wagaman Jr. put on a show at the end of this thing. And come to find out, it was Corey Eliason getting the win. It's the second time he's won there. But Wagaman got a run at him coming out of turn number four. Those of you watching the video, here it is. That right there is four one thousandths of a second. That's neat. Corey Eliason picked up the win. Um, Wagaman, Danny Dietrich third. Danny Dietrich, six Pennsylvania races, six podium Whew. finishes. Pretty good stuff. Yes. That is for consistent. sure. Yes, very consistent, very good. One of those was a win, by the way, too. Howard Moore won at Farmington. Jake Helsel won twice at Central Arizona Speedway and 360 Racing, and Dale Howard won with USCS. All right, now Pizza Bowl has got us totally off the reservation. <laughs> We're going to go to the Sage Fruit Hotline, where Carson Macedo will join us next. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Fruit strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a sage fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Fresh off from that trip to Victory Lane in Kennedy. What a thriller that one was. I mean, the box score, Aaron, said he led flag to flag. <laughs> That's what the box score yeah, said. it did. But the elbows had to get put up a little bit at the end of that one. Carson Macedo joins us. Hello, Carson. How are you? Hey, guys. Good. How you doing? We're doing well. Um, yeah. You had to work the last few laps on that one. Kind of describe the way that race unfolded for you. Yeah, it was a crazy night. You know, started out really well, obviously, going quick time. And then um, you know, drew a good number for the dash. And then, yeah, I started on the pole there and led, like you said, the whole race. But it seemed like there was a lot of close calls. I was, you know, really nervous. The track was a little bit narrow to start the race. But I think it widened up pretty nice there at the end and kind of got a couple of grooves. And I was lucky that it ended when it did, I think, because uh, I think that the top was coming in in three and four. And I was going to be in trouble pretty soon if I didn't move up but just you know when you're leading you just don't really know um where a lot of them guys are at and unfortunately that corner was exactly where i couldn't see the big screen so um that it was all a guess so uh yeah lap traffic got hairy a couple times there i think i was trying to get by the seven car at one point and 
I had Sheldon kind of lingering off my right rear and I could see him and hear him. And then, uh, you know, sort of the same there at the end with Reitzel and, and David, you know, when I was trying to get, trying to get by the six car. So I'm lucky it uh, unfolded the way it did. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was interesting to say the least. Carson, this was the first time the World of Outlaws had visited uh, this racetrack. What is it like going to a new place where not only you don't have any notes, but really nobody has or, or not many of the drivers have notes? Uh, is there stuff you do ahead of time? Do you do a little bit of research or watch some videos? Or is there any way to, to prep to kind of learn the nuances of the track? Yeah, I tried to watch as many videos as I could. They had a 410 race there a couple weekends prior to that. Um, I was talking to my buddy Dominic Selzy about, you know, he had ran that race and I was trying to find videos. I joked around with him, said that they must have taped it on like OnlyFans or something because I couldn't find it <laughs> anywhere. Um, I, I, but, you know, I, I did as much as I can usually prior to the races trying to, you know, just get as much data and feedback as I possibly can from watching other races that have happened there in the past. But Kennedale's mostly, it seems like they run uh, modified there. So there wasn't a whole lot of research that I could really do um, other than maybe a couple of 305 races. So it's challenging. Um, it's probably one of the biggest challenges of being full-time on the World of Outlaw Tour. But uh, luckily, like you said, nobody else has notes either. Nobody else has much experience there. So um, we're all kind of in the same boat. And luckily for me, you know, with Philip Dietz being one of the best in the sport, he kind of navigates those situations pretty quickly. And so, you know, I've kind of learned over the course of my experience on the Outlaw Tour to, you know, do my best to do the same. So um, I feel like that's what separates a lot of those professional teams. And usually it, you know, kind of plays into our favor for the most part, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Carson, the fact that you use Dominic Selzley and OnlyFans in the same sentence is a really, <laughs> really scary thought. It really, truly is. Um, but we'll leave well, that. If anybody knows Dominic. That's exactly what he would have said. <laughs> You're right. No, that's right. Exactly. As long as he says it and does not participate over there, then I think we're, then, then I think oh, we're boy. all right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, let's see. When you go to a new place like this, and it was a weird night because the power went out, so you had a delay, and you're actually going to get a new place with Thunderbird. What's it like when you guys roll the world of outlaws into a new place? Do you feel the energy? Do you feel the vibe from, from the place rocking like it was on Saturday night? Yeah, I felt I felt actually a little bit bad for the fans at first just yeah. because, you know, that was one of those deals that's just really out of everyone's control. I mean, you know that Kennedale Speedway and all the staff there and the owners of the facility were not anticipating, you know, turning the lights on and their transformer going out. And, you know, I could see that people were starting to get frustrated, and, and that's a tough position to be in because you know that they're trying to do their best, but they're, they're trying their best to put their best foot forward to do a good job. And the last thing they want to do is be upsetting everyone. So it's I mean, it's definitely just uh, one of those weird deals, but it kind of delayed the show a little bit, which I think made the track a, a little bit, you know, more narrow early in the night, um, just because the sun goes down and you don't have that hot lap and qualifying sessions on the track um, like you normally do in the sunlight. So, uh, but no, I mean, you could just see it. Like the fans were just, they were so pumped that we were there. They were, they were anticipating such a cool show. And I was just happy that, you know, that the people there at Kennedale Speed were able to, you know, work with the World of Outlaws and persevere and get through that situation, get a generator there, get it hooked up, and then we were able to kind of put on the show that we, uh, that the fans paid to watch. So I was really happy about that. I felt like, um, you know, the merchandise, everything, they were just super supportive of us, and that makes us happy, and of course makes the World of Outlaws want to go back. So I I anticipate, you know, Kennedale being on the schedule again next year, and. Um, I know Randy Gass and, you know, Noah Gass's dad and a lot of really good people are involved with Thunderbird Speedway coming up on Friday. So I anticipate good things for that race as well. Well, it's a good thing they got the power back on because you needed that big screen for all your uh, all your video, <laughs> you know, watching during the race. Talk a little bit more about that. Carson, you referenced it in Victory Lane. You referenced it with us here um, about kind of seeing the traffic behind you on the big screen. I mean, how much do you get to look at it? And I know this is a hot topic sometimes in the sprint car world of of those big screens, but it certainly seemed helpful for you. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are for it and against it. I think that it's you know, an interesting thing, right? Because it can be good and it can be bad, um, depending on, you know, how that goes for you as a driver. I, for me, I I feel like I can, you know, things have maybe slowed down enough for me to where if, it, if, if it's placed in a, you know, a place where I'm, 
usually transitioning a corner, I can kind of peek up at it and see where things are at. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you could peek up at it in the middle of the straightaway and then miss your corner, and then that could cause you to lose the race. So it's not necessarily always a good thing. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you try to stay focused on hitting your lines and not not making the error of looking away and then causing yourself to miss. But, um, yeah, I, I think that I think that it's a tool that you can use, you know, good or bad. It, it can help you. It can hurt you. But um, the other night, you know, there, there, as a driver, you know, you're it's so situational. You do this long enough where, you know, you're getting into lap traffic. You can feel your pace slowing down. You can feel that you're making mistakes. Or maybe you're not making mistakes, but the cars in front of you are slowing you down enough to where the guys behind you are going to catch you. And then you can kind of start to hear them. And then at that point, you can peek around and say, okay, maybe here's what I need to do different. Or like for me, Saturday night, the situation was, look, I think the bottom's where I need to be. And I'm just going to stay down here, stay disciplined. And, you know, if they want to, if, if they drive around me, well then man, that's, you know, tip of the hat. But um, I stuck to what I was doing and, and it worked out. If, if there was a few more laps, maybe it wouldn't have, but um, you know, for that situation it did. And that's, I guess that's all that matters. When we look at your season, Carson, um, and a lot's been made of this, um, you guys struggled early, 14th, 12th, 16th, and 14th. Your last four have been significantly better, third, second, eighth, and first. Now, we always talk about the driver-crew chief relationship, and you and uh, Philip Dietz, the relationship there is really strong. Take us a little deeper in this. Last year, it was, in the last few years, you had Clyde Knipp and Nate Reppitz, uh, Nate Reppitz on your team. They both made the decision that they were going to move on to other things, other situations. You bring two, ni- two new guys in, Robbie McQuinn and Adam Zimmerman. Can you just kind of walk us through the the transition in getting new people in new places and how challenging that is for one of these World of Outlaw teams? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, in this day and age, it's extremely difficult. Uh, it just seems like scarcity of crew guys has went through the roof and it's not easy to find crew guys in general, but it's really hard to find crew guys that are really good and um, you know, basically don't need much coaching or teaching. Um, and unfortunately, like for World of Outlaw teams that are trying to compete for a championship, the coaching and teaching thing is tough because, you know, when mistakes are made, typically uh, they come with consequences. And usually that comes in the form of a bad run or a DNF or something happening that hinders your night. And um, so we, we were obviously going into the off season with the mindset and idea that it wasn't going to be easy. Um, there was a lot of guys that a lot of other teams that were looking for car chiefs and tire guys as well. And so, you know, that drives up even more competition in the market. And I mean, it's no different than anything else in the world is just supply and demand. So, you know, we were just doing our best to um, make the right decision because, you know, as easy as it is to just hire somebody, it's, making the right hire is really important. I mean, not only do you have to, does that person have to be extremely good at what they do and fluent in what they know, but they also have to, you got to live with them. You got to be on the road with them almost all the time. So you want them to be somebody that you want to be around as well. So, you know, we were spoiled probably the last three years with Clyde Knipp and Nate. They were just, you know, Clyde was like, is a, not only was he amazing at what he did, but he's like the class clown. I mean, he always put a you know, happy smile on everybody's face and Nate was really good at what he did you know it really came in with zero experience and became one of the better or best you know tire guys on the road at the time so when we had to make that transition it was tough but um man we really lucked out in the end I think you know Robbie McQuinn spent the last two years on the road with Noah Gas team and um did a great job there and brought a lot of knowledge and and has a great attitude and Adam was is new kind of to the to the scene but has worked for a few local teams and is really mechanical and has taken to the you know tire position role super fluently and uh I think that he's going to do a great job so they get along they're like brothers it's crazy um I would have thought that they were born together the way they kind of get along and talk and they're like two of the same but I think we're in a really good spot and uh, it just seems like the team's gelling again, and I think it's only going to get better from here. So that makes me excited. Yeah, it certainly seems like it's all coming together. Carson, I want to go a little off track. We talked to your brother last week, and he was he was bragging on your grilling skills. And I know that Steve's going to want to hear about your your food because I don't know if you saw or heard the opening of the show, but that's pretty much all we talked about was food. So <laughs> tell us what you've been grilling up lately. 
So I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like a food connoisseur. Even though I'm skinny, I I I, I love eating all the time. So yeah. I love uh, like barbecue. Oh, in fact, we were just in Texas, obviously, and like Texas barbecue is like something that I would move there for that. It's that good, in my opinion. And I try to, you know, I've got a Traeger at home and I've got a Blackstone grill. So, like, my family's coming over. I'm going to make some teppanyaki hibachi tonight. And I'm really, really into it. Um, and I've gotten probably more into it than I should be, really. And, um, it's like my hobby. My fiance makes fun of me because I spend so much money on meat. But it's worth it and it's really good. And she definitely doesn't complain about how it tastes. So, um, yeah, I love it. I, I, I had to slow it down for a while cause I was like cooking briskets just for us two. And there was so much leftovers and over, over abundance of meat in the end that I had to like slow down a little bit and do a, a little bit less of the big cook, but, um, it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. My God, I, 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 I'm a, I'm an empty nester now. And so like when I have a Sunday <laughs> off, I'll grill out. Well, then I'm like, what am I going to do with all of this food? <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. And, leftovers. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, leftovers, leftovers, but you can only go leftovers yeah, for so on long. On day three, that's And all so then I freeze it. Well, then Forget I don't want to get something out of the freezer. I want to grill. And so it's just, a, it's a mess. It's a good problem to have. Um, I, I'll never forget Carson. Uh, the, I was like, yeah, because he jokes, he's a skinny guy. And he is a skinny guy. And we were talking one time and he gave me the secret menu for in and out and uh, and I, I got it. It was spectacular. And I'm like, I'm taking food suggestions from a skinny guy, but that's all right. It's all acceptable. So yeah, is- yeah, I love it, man. I try and find all the little you know places. I hate the worst thing is being on the road and going to a chain restaurant. Like I love going to new places and trying new things. So you get to experience a lot of it because of that mentality, I think. Yeah, no doubt. Have you ever had pretzel bully? Oh jeez. I haven't. No. Okay. Where's that at? In North Carolina? The, no, it's in Pennsylvania. When you go up there, <laughs> okay. okay mama's, Are you getting like a referral mama's, fee here? I should get Ron to give me a, <laughs> Mama's Pizza in Wellsville, Stromboli oh, made out I've of. Been pr- to, you've been to Mama's? I've been to Mama's Pizza, yeah. Yeah, with Ron. Uh, pretzel Bowling, yeah. though. It's made. It's Stromboli made with pretzel, though. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll I'll have to give that a try. We're into that. It's good. I'm, I'm I will with for you. Sure, give that a try. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mama's is great. Ron is Ron is great. Everyone's good there. So that's cool. Ron's a legend. Yeah. yeah. Rutherford. Yep. Good stuff. Awesome, Carson. Congratulations on the win. We always appreciate the time sharing and, and breaking things down with us. And I know we'll be talking to you throughout the season. But uh, congratulations on the win and the con- and continued success as you go forward. I appreciate it, guys. It's always a pleasure to be on, and I. Uh, I look forward to the the next time. There we go. Carson Macedo joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline for Food Talk with a little (laughs) sprint cars thrown in. Stay with us. Uh, Who's next? Corey Eliasson (laughs) joins us next. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Fruit strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage. See, we're sponsored by Sage Food. <laughs> now, it's healthy food, uh, but you can do apples on the grill. You can do apples mm-hmm. anywhere. Yeah, apples exactly. on the grill are good. Apples on the grill. Pears. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, maybe we need. Cobbler. I'll tell you. Yeah, maybe we need to get, you know, we need to get all of our chefs. We had Dominic Selzy or Gio Selzy last week talking about yeah. eating. And Carson, we need to get them all and see what we can do with competition. Uh, competition with apple or pear recipes. Oh. oh, you imagine a little apple with uh, Carson's brisket? Oh my <laughs> gosh! Now we're now we're showing off. All right, food talk continues on here. Well, now let's go to the Sage Fruit Outline and talk a little sprint car racing. Uh. Change of pace here. We're going to talk sprint cars. Corey Eliasson joins us. Hello, Corey. How are you? Uh, good. How are you? 
Yeah, great. Great catching up with you. Corey, uh, getting that first win of the season, getting it in the month of March, getting it with a whole new combination that you've even rebuilt since the beginning of the year has to be really, really good to uh, to check that off at BAPS on Sunday afternoon. Uh, definitely. It's definitely, um, you know, start of the year, the way things go, it, it can uh, it can wear on you quickly. And, you know, just to, I guess our results weren't there. We were working through it, kind of getting going and um we just made a change at the top and uh that's what brian ridge decided to do and it it uh, ultimately paid off to, for us this weekend Corey, you mentioned something in victory lane about uh your new crew chief jim shuttlesworth he i don't know if I, the exact quote but about how he did some things to the car that you didn't even want to know about that wouldn't work anywhere else uh what is it like to have that confidence though in, in a new crew chief um it's you know it's it's I guess it's just a, a trust thing. You just build the trust, and uh, when you're there racing, you do things. You you kind of find a base, and you kind of stick around. You know what's comfortable in the setup. So, um, just some of the things that he talked about that he can do, or that you know they do in in Central PA. It's it's more of a mental thing. So he kind of said some things that I've usually when we go down that that path that I was you know kind of get in my head. Oh, this this might not work. So. Um, I did tell him, you know, when he decided he wanted to do um, whatever he's going to do to the car, I just said that the best, uh, you know, we can talk about it, everything, but whatever you decide to do, just don't tell me until after we're done, just in case either A, it'll work good, or B, it doesn't work good. I just don't want to know. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just there to, you know, get in the car and do my job. So as long as I can't uh, be persuaded kind of one way with, you know, my own thoughts of what I think is going to happen, it's, it'll probably end up being better. Corey, you and I had we had a good visit up at Babs Motor Speedway, and you coming to Pennsylvania for last weekend, and I believe you're staying there this weekend, is good for the relationship with you and Jim. But you also talked about the fact that it is so unique that you need you don't need to stay there too long. Can you kind of describe to me, uh, like kind of kind of relive a little bit of that conversation on why it's great to be in Pennsylvania? But why you guys need to make sure that you're 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 working beyond the Keystone State as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, it, being there, you know, Jim has been around there for quite a while. He has a lot of wins, a lot of experience around there. So um, going to PA play is was a, a really good idea, um, just as the simple fact of, you know, crew chief and driver has to understand each other's language and, and I guess, demeanor and how they interpret things. So um, going there, you know, Jim with the new driver, it's a little easier on, on his part for him to understand what I'm saying just because he has, you know, a base. He kind of understands the racetracks a lot better than I would um, in that state. So even if I, you know, said something that, that left it open-ended on, on which corner to work on or, or which direction to go, he still has the knowledge of idea of which way he needs to go anyway. So it, it makes the – the learning process less painful trying to you know understand each other and 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 goes same for me as i can you know hear what he says and see what he does and you know it'll give me confidence that you know every time we make a change it's you know it, it's going to perform better or it, it does you know what you expect it to do so um that that's definitely the benefit then also you know as we talked about we do need to get out of pa just because he is he's very good in pa and he's that made it, you know, everyone knows Jim Shellsworth wins races there with doesn't matter who dri who's driving it. Um, but we do need to get out of PA because those tracks are very different. All, all the tracks, even if they're small, they're still, you know, long straightaways, tight corners. And we got to start going to tracks that are more momentum style racing. They're more circles. Um, you know, the dirt's different. The air's different. So just rough hooked up. Yeah. It's just a change of pace. So, um, like I said, I, I'm, our plan is we go back to PA this weekend, and then um, after that, I think we'll kind of leave that state and maybe do some out, you know, do an outlaw show or something before um, we get high limit going. Corey, that all makes sense. You know, it's a great way for you guys to to learn to work with each other and learn your communication. But how important is is that confidence of getting a win too? Obviously, it's a great like like you said, it's a great way for you guys to get to know each other. But before you go back out on the high limit tour, how how nice is it to have that win under your belt? Um, it, it's, it's definitely relieving, um, to say the least is, you know, you can finally, it's, it's always when you start the year, you, 
it's you, everyone wants to win and everyone's out there trying to win. So you just got to get that first win out of the way. And it's like, once you can kind of break through, um, it, it just, you know, let some of the nerves go away that you're, you're capable of being up front again. And then, you know, you're back, you just go right back there with confidence and knowing that the car will work and, and you can do your job and the crew does their job and everybody goes together and has the same goal. And we head down the same path of, you know, ultimately trying to win. Corey, beyond the win at BAPS, um, and you talk about unique Pennsylvania racetracks, there's no more unique racetrack on the planet than Williams Grove. It has to be pretty good to get in there and get out of there with a podium finish as well. Uh, definitely, yeah. That was, I think, my best finish. I think when I was talking to you, it was seventh or sixth. I can't, I can't remember last year yeah. um, with the, the Crouch team. So um, running third, you know, to, to Freddie Raymer and Danny Dietrich and, you know, having Macri and Sisney right there, I feel like that's pretty good company in Central PA. And you know, just trying to figure out, I feel I've worked very hard at at trying to understand Williams Grove and trying to get around that um, a lot better than I have been able to in the past. And um, having Jim and his knowledge, you know, as not only a crew chief, but you know, he a lot of people forget he raced as well. Granted, he did a lot of late model stuff, but he still was there. He understands how to kind of get around those racetracks and. That's uh, that's just another benefit that, you know, he brings to uh, the Ridge and Sons team. Yeah. You mentioned Ridge and Sons team. Um, uh, Mark Miller's doing a lot of marketing stuff for you. I've known Mark for years and years, good friend of mine. He actually brought over Brian to our PRI display for Racing Electronics. Just tell me a little bit about Brian and Lisa, their passion for the sport. They have you on the national tour. They have Aaron Moore, Aaron Reitzel more local. Just, uh, just, just getting a line with some folks that have such a passion for sprint car racing. How, how important is that for you? And, and talk a little bit about their passion that they have for it. Um, it's, it's awesome to have, you know, Brian and Lisa as, as the car owners and, um, Jeff Kettles is involved in as, it, uh, as well. Um, they are, you know, they're, they're passionate enough that they, they have two teams, you know, it's in this, in today's world, it's tough just to be able to afford to run one, let alone, uh, they have two, they have, you know, myself is going to be traveling a lot and then they have Aaron Reitzel to where they can still go to the races, you know, support Knoxville and, and be there to watch every weekend so they have a, a car to go watch locally but then they can also you know fire up the streaming services and and watch another car go around and and be committed you know both at the i wouldn't really say aaron's a, a local car he he gets around he's going to travel quite a bit i mean he does their focus is going to be knoxville but there's still you know 60 70 races on the schedule so um just to have them brian and Lisa that want to like i said put out that much money to be able to run two teams is, is hard to come by. So um, they're, they're great people. It's, it's more of a family atmosphere, which is awesome to be around, you know, to have them that they just want to make sure everybody's happy. Everyone's having fun and, you know, they're willing to continue to do this as long as they have fun. So that's kind of their, uh, their main goal. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool talking to them, and they're like, you're based in Knoxville, and it's like, when you're in Knoxville, come on over to the shop, hang out at the shop. They were just, I, I really enjoyed getting to meet Brian and, and really the whole gang over there. I've got two other questions for you <laughs> off the racetrack. Um, I went on your social media, and you have some stickers and some stuff for Leo. Who's Leo? Leo the, Leo the dog. Who's Leo? What's, what's, what's the story <laughs> here? <laughs> that would be my kid. That is my kid. He was in Victory was, Lane, uh, right? But if I didn't have a kid, so... Yeah, he is. He goes everywhere with us to the races. Everyone knows him. Um, he has a personality and a half that uh, when, when we're in Knoxville, I'll I'll bring him over if we do the Wing Nation up there. I'll bring him out with us because yeah. he is uh, he is definitely the star of the show. He's he's like I said, he's my kid. He goes. We go to the races. We go to the gas station. We go get food. <laughs> he he doesn't care. He just loves to go and loves to be with us. That is awesome, man. There is nothing better than a dog as a as a sidekick. Are you? Did you stay in Pennsylvania this week, or did you did you did you head back somewhere else? Or are you sticking around Pennsylvania this week? No, I flew home. Um, actually, I'm, I I have work to do in the shop, so I'm uh, back working. Unfortunately, work in the um, shop until what are you Thursday, working on? and I'll fly back. What are you working on? <laughs> um, I I have a a fab business and a powder coat shop that uh, I kind of started and uh, grew now. So now I kind of run that during the week and you're racing on the weekends. 
Well, I'll tell you what. I love that. I love that you uh, – I mean, I know that it might not be what you want to be doing, but it's good to have that there. <laughs> uh, keep the bills paid, that's for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Corey – That's it. Yeah. Corey, really enjoyed oh, – No, wait. Hold, hold on. Hold on, yeah. Steve. What's that? This whole show, every segment, you've brought up food. Yeah. Let, we got to bring up some okay. food subject up. with Corey, you know, like the the pizza roni or you know something. Pretzel Come on, pretzel bowl. Oh, pe- pretzel pretzel bowl. Sorry. What's your Corey? What's your go to food on the road? This has all been about food talk. What's your go to food on the road? Uh go to food on the road, Chipotle. If I can find a Chipotle, I'm I'm happy. Man, my uh, when I first did that, my daughters introduced me to that, and I'm like this. I'm like, there's no way this is gonna work. And then I went and we, that is one of our go-tos here at home when it's yeah. we have two or three that we go to. I love Chipotle. I yeah. love it. That's for sure. Good yeah, stuff. That, me too. I'm a five, six times a week guy. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, what's your, uh, what's your go-to at Chipotle? Is it you mix it up with the steak and chicken and other stuff or you have the same, same order? Uh, no, I mean, I, I change between tacos, burrito, and a bowl. Uh, I've been on a bowl for the past year probably. Uh, but mainly I stay with chicken. It's pretty simple. It's chicken, rice, sour cream, cheese, and then the uh, either guac or corn salsa, depending on the day, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Do you like their chips with guac? Yum. Yes. It was so that the next thing you have to try is their chips with sour cream. Really? Their chips? Yeah, I, it, trust me, it's very weird. My friend taught me this. He would get chips and a side of sour cream, and I'm like, you are a weirdo. And he's like, you have to try it. And just with their chips, with the salt and the lime on their chips, yeah. with the sour cream, mm. I bet it's, it is actually very good. I bet because their chips are ridiculous, and I've always gone mm-hmm. with the guac. But you're, I think, yeah, I like that. Ah, that's the next move. <laughs> that's the next move. I'm yeah. telling you, that's good. Corey, congratulations <laughs> on the win. Thanks for the food tip. I'm gonna have to try that next time yeah. I go to Chipotle. Um, but Much that closer is great. than yeah, going to Mama's. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to Chipotle and then Mamas today. Yes, exactly. So uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate the time and wish you continued success here with uh, with the Ridge and Sons Racing Team. Thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you. There we go, Corey Eliason. Oh man, because because uh, their <laughs> chips are unreal. They are really Chipotle good. Chipotle chips are unreal. <laughs> and I get the, the problem is the guac is so good. The guac but I is kind of get the sour cream. That mm-hmm. makes some sense. With the little lime hint, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. We're going to have to try that. That's for sure. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. What a show. Corey Eliason <laughs> and Carson Macedo, man. And food. And food. A lot of I'm food. Starving. I'm starving. I hope Ron's shipped one of those uh, pretzel bowlies down here. That's it. Uh, <laughs> National Sprint Car <laughs> Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, yeah. Craig keeps putting it on the he screen. He's calling now, it a yeah. pizza roni or yeah. something too. What well, do you call well, it, Craig? When he said yeah. pizza roly yeah, roni, it, yeah, yeah. Well, Craig was like I was when they're talking, and it's like pretzel, bo- uh, pretzel bowl, pretzel, whatever it is. And then when I saw it, then I knew what it oh, was. It comes and together, it was, and, and it came, came together because of the bully, the strong bully. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Ridiculous. Uh, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthday calendar, a quiet week. Uh, no bir- the only birthdays are on Thursday. Hank Arnold and Jay Gordon Betts. Jay Gordon Betts, a 2002 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame, born in eight, uh, 1918. His father was a superintendent for the Los Angeles Motor Speedway of Board Track. Do you ever, did you ever see any of those videos of those board tracks? Oh, yeah. Wild. That now, you, have, you think sprint car drivers nowadays are crazy. Those four tracks are wild. I mean, and there's that, a reason they no longer exist. Well, that they used to burn down also, but they well, but, and they but, fly out of the park and oh my not. god, when they fly out of the ballpark, there, yeah. I mean, they go they go out of the ballpark. Yeah, I mean, it's like catapulted out of yeah. the ballpark. Wow, Phew. crazy stuff. Well, his dad was a superintendent of the track at 15 years old, he was working the pay window at Legion. 
Ascot Speedway. Now, the pay window is not for the faint of heart. No. The pay window is not for the faint of heart. Uh, Fred Raymer and I talked about pay window and, and antics and shenanigans. At oh, pay windows. boy. Oh, yeah. Exactly. The Raymer and shenanigans. Yes. Hmm. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'll, I'll share it as we get. Let's get through this. Oh, my gosh. Age 17, he was the chief steward for the Triple A racing at Tucson. At age 23, he was running the entire West Coast Operations. For the American Auto Club, 1955 AAA left racing. Uh, Betts moved to USAC, board of directors. He was also the chairman of the Automobile Competition Committee for the United States, ACCUS. And he passed in 2008, but he's forever enshrined at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. And, of course, you can become a member of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. It comes complete with a discount. Mm -hmm. SprintCarHOF.com. That's SprintCarHOF.com. I have got, I cannot wait. I've got a couple trips to get out there. I might get out there a couple times this year. Oh, nice. I might get out there two. I might get out there three times. Just showing off then. Then yeah, I'm showing that, that, off. Then you're just rubbing it in. Then I'm just rubbing it in. Exactly. Just so wrong. Great, great stuff. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Okay, so I'm in the pits at uh, BAPS, okay? And um, Rich Eichelberger owns Freddy's Car, yeah. okay? I'm standing there talking to Aaron, Aaron Raymer, yeah, yeah, Aaron Moody, yeah. Aaron Raymer. She's running the Boston Marathon yep. coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're just chit chatting. And Fred comes walking out of the trailer and he says, Just when you think you've saw it all, saw it all. I'm like, what? And he points, and there's a pan of charcoal cooking beside the engine. The heater to heat the engine yeah. up broke. And so Rich Eichelberger went old school. Wow, and just that's did very old school. Yeah, very old school. And Fred looks and laughs and says, just when you think you've seen it all, you'll see it with this team, with this crew. And I said, man, if we had some burgers and hot dogs and marshmallows, we'd course, really have something. Food. Exactly. But no, it was just funny when, when I, I thought about that. We, that, I just love going up there, um, just catching up with people. I mean, it's just really, really cool to catch up with folks. Um, I love... Kyle Moody's dad and I, we talk all the time. Just, he could not be a nicer guy. There's just so many cool people, and yeah. it's just fun. But, uh, yeah, they had charcoal going in the Eichelberger pit. I'm like, man, that's good stuff. <laughs> Speaking of good stuff, World of Outlaw and NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars coming up this weekend. A new track for the Outlaws, Thunderbird Speedway, Muskogee, Oklahoma. How about that on Friday night, Aaron? And, well, they're going back to a place on Saturday that they've been to before. Oh, yeah, 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas. It's the Wichita Sprint Car Showdown. That's the 14th time the World of Outlaws has visited there. The most recent was 2023, and Rico was in Victory Lane. Rico was in Victory Lane. Central Pennsylvania, Friday night, Williams Grove, Saturday, Lincoln, and Port Royal. Port Royal trying to get that sprint car season opener off the ground. We'll see what happens with them. As well as Attica yeah. trying to get their season oh. over. This is uh, take number three. And then also racing is Farmington Empire Speedway. Yeah, fun stuff. It really is. Um, I, I, I want to, I wanna, before, we, before we get out of here with our food talk show, uh, <laughs> small sprint car racing show, um, if you like what we're doing here on Wing Nation, like, share, um, and uh, support us, uh, Facebook, Instagram, X, uh, Wing Nation. You can find us on all of those. Um, hopefully at the end of this week, I'll have a video out with, um, with uh, Brain Fade here. Um, <laughs> Gosh, uh, Dylan Norris, uh, Dylan Norris. I had total brain fade on that. I was thinking Tyler Ross and I <laughs> Dylan Norris. So I'll have a video out later on. It'll be on our YouTube page where all of these shows are as well. So like, share, and, uh, and, and spread the word. Spread the sprint car gospel as well. And for God's sake, go to a racetrack this week. You might have as much fun as I did. And stop at a local establishment and get yourself something to eat some pizza bowling at chipotle and get some sour cream to go with your chips do something fun on the way to the racetrack or just go to the concession oh my god oh Williams boy. Grove, sauerkraut dogs at williams grove and brickers fries mm. at baps oh my gosh so good so <laughs> folks get you better out get to it. run club I, we got <laughs> run club what's that oh my god yeah, um, great stuff. Really, really fun. Fun weekend in Central Pennsylvania. So good to see a lot of folks up there too. And and I appreciate everyone coming up and saying hi and and and, and sharing with us that you're uh, you're 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 part of Wing Nation. We really do enjoy it. That's for sure. And we enjoy conversations like we had today. Carson Macedo and Corey Elias and joining us here today on the program. For Aaron Evernham, I'm Steve Post. Thanks for joining us this time on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit.